Whole Life Challengers. Today we are cooking a classic American dish. It is a pot roast. And a pot roast is a great way to take an inexpensive yet tough piece of meat and with a few hours worth of cooking, render it into a much more tender, uh, much more palatable piece of meat and to give yourself uh, lots of leftovers for the week to come. As a matter of fact, this gets better uh, the longer you store it in the refrigerator. Okay, so what I've got here is a piece of chuck roast. Chuck roast comes from the front of the cow. It's a, um, it's a well-worked piece of meat, so it's got lots of connective tissue, it's got lots of collagen. You want all that stuff to melt down to give you a richer dish. If you want something a little bit leaner than the chuck roast, you can choose something from the sirloin or the rump, sort of an eye of, eye of round um, or a sirloin roast. And those are a little bit leaner, but you have to be a little bit more careful because they have more of a tendency to dry out. They have less fat than the chuck does. So I have the chuck, and that's what I'm going to be making my pot roast out of today. You, there's lots of steaks you can use uh, from the chuck. You've got chuck roast. You've got what's called a seven bone roast. You can use boneless short ribs. Um, just ask your butcher, and he can direct you towards something uh, that's going to work for you. What I've done here is I have seasoned this steak really, really well with salt. This is like a, four, a three pound piece of meat. So uh, it can take a lot of salt and it takes a while for it to penetrate. So I seasoned this a couple of hours ago, at least an hour. If you can, two or three hours before you cook it, you wanna season it really well with salt. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this browning here. It's gonna take about 10 minutes to get it fully brown. And while that's happening, I'm gonna show you how to prepare the rest of the vegetables for this dish. This is one of those rare dishes where you don't actually have to do all of your preparation before cooking starts. So let's begin. Okay, I've got this cast iron Dutch oven going over a medium high heat. Now with cast iron, you wanna be careful. You really don't wanna get much over a medium high heat because it retains heat so well, it can get hot over a lower heat than you might do with a skillet, which is gonna lose a lot of heat as soon as you drop meat into it. So what I've done is I've dried off my piece of meat because salting it is going to make it a little bit moist. So I've dried it off and I'm gonna lay it down in here. And that's what you want to hear. And I'm going to let that go for about two and a half minutes to three minutes per side while I go and prep the other parts of the meal. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to peel and cut into chunks three medium to large carrots. If you have large carrots, make it two. These are medium, so I'm going to make it three. You really want to have chunks of carrots about the size of your thumb for this. Okay, so I'm gonna flip this over. Now, when you go to flip the meat over, if it doesn't wanna let go of the pan, it's not ready, and that's okay. It's gonna take a little bit of um, inattention if you really wanna burn this. So if it needs to go for three minutes or three and a half minutes for it to let go, that's fine. I told you this was a medium high heat, and just to give you a sense, my dial goes up to six and then high on my burner. Three, I consider medium. This is set to four, so it's not super high. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this. I'm probably gonna have to use my hands too because it's a big chunk of meat. And there, you can see I've got some really nice color and that's what I'm going for on at least four of the sides of this. So I'm gonna let this go and we'll go back to prepping the vegetables. Next, I'm gonna cut two ribs of celery and I'm going to peel and slice two onions. Okay, so the meat is nicely browned on all sides. I pulled it out of the pot and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start cooking some of the vegetables that we just prepared. Now you'll see here in the bottom of the pan, I've got what's called fond. That's some of the brown leftovers from cooking the meat. You actually want that. That's not burnt yet and it can, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna use these vegetables over the next few minutes. I'm gonna cook the celery and these carrots for five to eight minutes to get a little color on them, but they're gonna release liquid that I'm gonna to use to scrape the bottom of the pan clean, and that is gonna add flavor to the pot roast liquid. All of the stuff that we're doing, all of the browning, the caramelization, that's meant to add flavor to the final dish. So we're just gonna cook these for a few minutes while we prepare the final ingredients for the dish. So what I've got here is some of the chicken stock that I'm gonna use in the dish. You can use chicken stock, you can use beef stock, 
Uh, you can use water if you have to. Um, some people like to cook with wine for a pot roast. You can do that. You certainly don't have to do that. So if you have a pot roast recipe that calls for wine, you can leave it out. Um, you can use red or white if you do. They both add different uh, components to the dish. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a packet of gelatin and I'm going to sprinkle this over some of the chicken stock that I'm going to use in the dish. And what this is going to do is just going to add a little bit more of the gelatinousness that I want to the final dish. Some of that's going to come from the uh, connective tissue and the collagen from the meat and some of it's going to be bolstered by the addition of this gelatin. Now what I've got here is actually kind of a special ingredient. A lot of the times when you're cooking something like a pot roast, you're gonna to add tomato paste. And tomato paste is a really good thing to have on hand. Once it gets cooked, meaning you cook it in the pan before you add liquid, it's going to build a level of savoriness or what's known as umami into the dish. Because this is a meat dish and because we love umami, I've added a few more ingredients to this that are going to make it even richer. So with the tomato paste here, I've got a few anchovy fillets that I've um, smashed up. Uh, I've got some garlic, some uh, minced garlic that I put in there. Uh, I've got some tomato paste, which you can see, uh, and I've got a little bit of red miso. Now you don't have to use all of these things. I would say use at least tomato paste, but you, if you have anything else like this, make sure you add it. It's gonna add a lot of flavor to the dish. The last few ingredients I have here are some herbs, that's thyme, and those are bay leaves, and some potatoes. The potatoes aren't gonna go in until about 45 minutes before the pot roast is done, otherwise they're just going to turn to mush. So we're gonna put those aside for now. You can use sweet potatoes here if you want to also. So the carrots and the celery have been cooking here for uh, about six minutes, and you can see they've taken on some nice color. You can see most of this fond has come off the bottom of the pan. If after a couple of minutes you notice that the fond is not coming off and it's starting to get a little darker, add one or two ounces of water and you can use that to scrape the bottom of the pan. You'll already have some color and the water will evaporate pretty quickly so you don't have to worry about it interfering with the browning. I'm now gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add the onions to this mixture and we're gonna cook this for another five or six minutes just to get some color on the onions. I'm gonna season it with salt a little bit at this point but you've got a lot of salt on your meat already and you can always adjust with salt at the end. So you don't want to over season early on in the game. So we're now going to cook these for five or six minutes. And I'll see you in a few. Okay, so we've been going with these onions for about five minutes. You can see they're much softer now than they were. They've started to take on a little bit of color. You're not looking for these to get totally caramelized, but you can see they're starting to get a little bit darker than we were. they were when we started. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add that special sauce ingredient that I told you about. This is the tomato paste, anchovy, miso, garlic paste that's going to add that much more umami flavor. And we're going to cook it for just a minute or so to get the raw tomato out of it because it's not raw tomato that really makes the difference. It's cooked tomato. You got cooked tomato is what adds that umami. Don't worry, you're not going to taste anchovies in this. You're not going to taste miso in this. Those are going to contribute what's called glutamic acid. And for those of you who are familiar with the term uh, MSG, that also adds glutamic acid. But this is going to add some glutamic acid, some really easy to access natural forms, and it's going to add just a lot of richness to the dish. So I'm just going to cook this for about a minute, and once that's done, we're going to be about ready to put it in the oven. Okay, so the final step before we put this into the oven is I'm going to add those, that thyme that I showed you and those bay leaves. I'm going to go ahead and nestle the meat right back into the middle of the pot. I've got my chicken stock that I added the um, gelatin to, and that's going to go here and the rest of that is gonna melt nicely and I've got, that was a, a cup of chicken stock and I've got three more cups that I'm going to add. You can actually dissolve gelatin into all of your chicken broth, you don't have to divide it, but you do wanna have enough liquid that it comes up like three quarters the, up the side of the meat. You can see this is mostly submerged, okay? If you don't have enough liquid there, just add some water and, uh, and the collagen in the meat is gonna add enough gelatin. We don't have to worry about it watering down. So we're gonna bring this up to a simmer and then we're gonna put it in the oven. 
Okay, so we've brought this up to a bear simmer. You can see right here, it's just starting to simmer. That is all you really want from that liquid. You do not want it to boil. You want this liquid to stay at about 185 degrees the entire time that this is cooking. It's nice and gentle, and it's gonna bring the internal temperature of the meat up nice and slowly, giving it a chance to break down that collagen and connective tissue over several hours. So I'm gonna cover this up. I'm not going to cover it completely. I'm gonna leave a little bit of a crack. The oven's at 275. And with that crack, it's gonna keep the liquid right at about 185 degrees. If you were to close this, it would probably end up closer to 210 or uh, uh, 212 degrees. You might start to boil it. So that's why you wanna keep that, um, you wanna keep that lid partially cracked. So here we go into the oven. Okay, so there we go. The pot roast is in the oven. It's gonna be in there somewhere around three hours. If I'm doing something a little bit leaner, like a rump or you know sirloin, it's probably gonna be in there a little bit shorter so it doesn't dry out. With the chuck, it might be in there a little bit more than three hours. I'm gonna check it in a couple of hours to see if it's getting tender yet. And I'll decide what to do from there. About an hour, 45 minutes to an hour before it's done, I'm gonna go ahead and add those potatoes to it and, uh, and finish it from there. So we'll see you in a little bit. Okay, so we are three hours into our cook and I checked it after two and it definitely wasn't super tender yet. So I thought, I'm not gonna put the potatoes in. This is probably gonna be longer than a three hour cook for my chuck. So I left it in. We're three hours in, we're gonna pull it out, see what we think of its tenderness. If it feels tender enough, I may just pull it out while I cook the potatoes, but it's definitely time to get the potatoes in there. So let's take this out of the oven and take a look at it. Okay, so what I wanna do to see if this is where I want it to be is I'm gonna stick a fork in it. And if the fork goes in really easily, without much resistance, it's done. And I can see here it's going in, in some spots, pretty easily. But in other spots, I definitely feel like I want a little bit more time, but it's definitely getting there. It's a little bit more tender than it was about an hour ago. So I'm gonna put this aside and then we're gonna cut up the potatoes, throw the potatoes in and get it back in the oven. Now I just wanna cut these potatoes up into some bite-sized chunks. So I'm gonna cut each one in half lengthwise and then in half again lengthwise. I love these halves and then half again and then half of that and half of that. I'm gonna do that with the second potato. You can see here, I've got the potatoes in, nothing special about it, and I'm gonna re-lid it and get it back into the oven. Okay, we're in the final stretch. In about 45 minutes, the potatoes are gonna be done. I'm feeling really good about where the pot roast is. I think it's gonna be as tender as I want it. Uh, and then we're gonna pull it out and we're gonna let it rest. See you soon. Okay, the time has come. We're gonna pull it out of the oven, make sure it's where we want it to be, and we're gonna let it rest. Okay, so this is our final pot roast. I'm just gonna test it a little bit, slip my knife in, and it goes in pr pretty effortlessly in many of these places, and that's exactly what I'm looking for to make sure that it's as tender as I want it to be. You don't want it to be so tender that it completely shreds when you try and pick it up, but we're gonna let it rest now for at least an hour. We're gonna cool it in this liquid. It's gonna actually absorb some of this liquid as it cools, and then you can eat it, or honestly, it's better tomorrow and it's even better the next day. So you can save it for a future meal rather than eat it right now. So we'll pull this out in an hour and see what we got. Okay, here is our finished pot roast. This is really kind of falling apart at this point. And if I had more time, I would put this in the refrigerator and let it cool completely before I sliced it and then rewarm it to eat it. But you can see the pieces here, this is just falling apart at the seams. Um, I'm gonna just slice it up for you and plate it so you can see what it all looks like. I know it doesn't look like much right now, but I'm just gonna give this a couple of good slices and I'll let the rest cool in the liquid and eat it later. And that's it, classic American pot roast.